Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for all of us who are planning to get married at some point, somebody say amen, amen. to discuss amen. how we want to plan a wedding, the nitty gritties of planning a wedding in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Now no better person to discuss this with us than our guest for today. Our guest today is an internationally recognized award-winning <laughs> event planner. Now not only is she an event planner, she's also the founder of the Musumola Nicole Akinwamide Foundation, one girl that's helping teenagers attain menstrual hygiene all around the world. Now, more recently, she authored the book, Magic of Moments, which is a collation of all her experiences. And we can't wait to see what goes on. But first of all, we want to ask a question. Please, how can we plan a wedding? And Mosumola Nicole Akinwamide is here with us. Thank you so much how for How can us. we plan a wedding in this country? In this I economy. Know. When Owanbear Rocks is at the center of our weekends. I, how, I how, know. how? I know. I mean, here's the thing. So uh, we've, as Nigerians, I'm going to start from what you say as Nigerians. Our taste boards are different. We're different people now. And aside from always wanting to have... Um, do you know events here and there events in nigeria right now has become a status thing so people even you if you want to do a wedding for less than five ten million now you'll be worried because hey, it doesn't even wait oh, what did you say did i say something wrong could you how much did you say oh you can't even plan a wedding for five ten million in there anymore let's all think. an average wedding venue <laughs> in nigeria costs about two million 1.5 million naira all the way up are you kidding are you guys kidding me Okay, 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 okay. You know so what? Like, I think we need to backtrack. <laughs> I think we need to backtrack. Okay. Yeah, only comes how, out much, how much how <laughs> much does average. how much does the average wedding cost to plan in Nigeria in twenty eighteen? Well, that's the thing. So there's no such thing called the average wedding anymore. I think, again, we are the people who get to define that. And in days of social media, you see what I mean? There's no such thing as average anymore. I think it's totally dependent on you as well, a you person. you know what the average Nigerian but, wants? Uh, well, because I handle, right, right now, I handle big budget to some degree but I, I would come a little lower and say just a nice wedding no paparazzi no drama all of those things maybe something in the tune of 12 million or 14 million or all the way sorry i just had to at, just the, had to, at the very oh, i just had to react like that but do not forget no, that I, your guest size also determine how expensive sweating, your you wedding will be <laughs> don't Girl, sweat don't <laughs> Thank you so much. Because I'm, I'm beginning to understand why many of us are single. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. That of course, that's why the guys are like, you know what? Uh, no, I, but just be right back. Though. Maybe we should do a comparative analysis wow. of what it will take to cost a wedding in Nigeria and what mm -hmm. it will take to cost to plan a wedding outside Nigeria. Now, Absolutely. you've done a few destination, a couple of destination weddings. Yeah. Yourself. Wait, how many weddings have you done in total? Um, uh, <laughs> I recently just found out that we've done over 500 plus Girl, weddings. fist bump, you go, <laughs> you go. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I've been in the industry for what? almost a decade, you guys, so I mean. Okay, so you've definitely done into the destination weddings. Absolutely. Which would you say is cheaper, doing a wedding outside Nigeria and doing a wedding here? Well, here's the first thing is, the first principle to planning any wedding is your guest size. If you have, to be honest, if you have a smaller guest size, you spend less, less money. If you have a huge number of guest size, you're going to, um, you're definitely going to spend less so it depends on more guests more money lesser guests you know so but that's with destination you can't come with your all your village member you can't come with your family members and everybody reduce guest size reduce the amount of money you spend so but that's the destination weddings that we've done where they didn't even spend half of what they spend in nigeria are you serious yeah so sometimes depending on the location of course destination weddings sometimes are cheaper Wow. That the kind of wedding that we have in Nigeria now you know the ones that break the internet in lagos nigeria yes wow yeah okay wow. so if Musumola Nicole Akinwamide, I come to you and I tell you that I have a budget of three million naira and I want to have a wedding. Can you plan a wedding within that range for me? I think the first question is how much is my fee? Like, are we? Are, are you going to pay me? Like, because that's already yeah. You know, like I don't think it does. It does much. A three million naira doesn't do so much for a wedding these days anymore an average venue so let's start with the venue an average venue doesn't cost i don't care where the venue is they don't cost less than 500k they don't cost less i than think I, I can agree with even that. if it's in yanokwaja or somewhere in Ibadan or whatever it is mm -hmm. it usually don't cost less than 500k and so if you're already taking a chunk of 500k out of your three million naira, then you're going to wear um some i think decent outfit your husband is going to do the same and then you're going to provide food and then, you know, so that's what I'm saying. If you do that, my three million naira doesn't quite. I think it. what is going to happen right now at this stage is that myself, my future husband, my parents, and just parents will travel abroad. 
you know, and we had a nice wedding by the beach. It works. And after saying, and they're more now, beautiful. Please, so I'm not saying that that's what I would do. Because the question they do is they now, so how much are we even then spending on school fees? You know how much you get? Wedding yeah. is just the start of all the wahala. How much are you then spending exactly. on school fees? All of this. Exactly. And you know what I realized? What I realized is that in Nigeria, there is not a single weekend where you do not know that a wedding is going on. And at the end of the day, we've managed to coin that as a phrase, oh, I'm bare rocks. And yes. we literally go around saying, okay, everything is oh, I'm bare, oh, I'm bare, oh, I'm bare. But seriously, does every wedding need to have that much people? Because hands up, I have been to weddings where I do not even know the celebrants. Huh. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, and, and then, um, first of all, statistics, there are about 5,000 weddings in Nigeria every Saturday. 500? 5,000. 5, 5,000 weddings in Nigeria every, every Saturday. Saturday. Is that because of our population? It is also because of our culture. Ooh. We like weddings. We Whoa. like parties. Any opportunity, any reason to party, any reason to do any O and B. People like, I mean, we're, we're tired. We're not as happy as we saw. O and B is a way that, yes, that's the only way we kind of um, douse the tension and all of that. So, yes. Um, but... Again, I think it's also, wedding has become like a status thing for us as well in Nigeria. So it's not just my daughter is getting married or I'm getting married. Like I said earlier, with the days of our social media. Our families are married. Yes, our families, all of us were getting married. So there's no such thing as, I mean, and, and, and for mean, Nigerians, it's even more really people. Yeah, but for them is, if we have more people at our venue, then we're popular. It's, it's, it's a thing of numbers. It's not also, I mean, if I, I was going to say earlier that there was a wedding we planned, I think, last year. And the lady who cut the bouquet does not know the bride, does not know the groom, does not know anyone. And so she had cut the bouquet, and then the bride said to me, she whispered to me, the hi, Musu, I don't know who that person is. And, then, and she asked her husband, I was like, I don't know who that person is. And so she came all dressed with LV, all, you know, well put together, sledge and all of those things. And so I walked to her to say, oh, congratulations, you cut the bouquet, you know, and all of this just sort of conversation. So which of them are you friends with? And she was like, well, I'm not friends with anyone. I mean, I was born in my house, and I know that it's usually wedding at, at this wedding, at this venue, so I decided oh, to come. And Bouncer. Bounce. Oh, Bounce. You can't even bounce her because when you see how she's gosh. dressed, you just think when you see how she's dressed, you don't get to ask her where's your invitation. Yeah. So you she just, just her heard in. that an event she was She did not going even hear. Down. She knows that that venue they usually would have high turn of over of events, wow. and then she just came in. Okay, you know what? What? That's a I've had several experiences, <laughs> several experiences yeah. over the past decade mm -hmm. and over 500 weddings mm -hmm. and you've decided to write a book yes and you wrote a book recently is your Absolutely. book basically about your experience as a wedding planner what's your book about it's magic of moments yes right? so the title of my book is called the magic of moments and so i've decided to share it's a bit of a biography of some of my clients how they found love when they found love what they did when they found love you know, for the ones who never found love, for the ones who were maybe abused in the process of finding love. And I've, I've come to realize that the stories are not peculiar to them. They're stories that defaces us as a people or yeah. as a nation and whatnot. And I thought, I mean, what better person to write about these things other than from the perspective of a wedding planner? And I don't think there's anything like that before. And most importantly, a lot of them gave me permission to write their story because, I mean, if you read the book, you understand what I'm saying. There are people who... Um, cases where um, some some particular lady was abused before she got mm -hmm. married and she found love. One other person borrowed money and put their house on collateral. Wait, she found love from the person that was abusing her? Somebody else. Oh, so she didn't get married. She didn't get married to the person. But it came to me, herself and the, the person was abusing her, they came to me and then that didn't work out and they made sure it didn't and then we found her a shrink and then she found somebody afterwards. And then they're the ones who put their home on collateral just to get married and to make sure that, you know, this whole pepper dem situation is the case. And wow. So, I mean, so, but it led the last thing. The, the beautiful part of sharing the story is I'm also sharing it from the point of view of when they've learned their lesson, how far they've gone, where they are now, and all of those things. But I think it's a bit of an interesting... And what um, would you read. say the effect of all of that and all these experiences has been on you? Because you're in a position where you're not a counsellor, <laughs> you're not a shrink, you're not a therapist, but you get to experience all these moments with people that you may not even have any relationship with. Mm -hmm. It's just a client basis. Mm -hmm. How has that affected you? Well, I mean, I, I, would, I would be honest with you. At the earlier time, say even four years back, um, there was a time I was very clear about not mm -hmm. getting married. Like, it wasn't for me because I guess I'd seen so much and then it's gotten to me. But I had to learn to put a wall and realize that this is, you know, these are people's life and doesn't have necessarily have to be my reality. And so, of course, um, watching a lot of people or watching things unfold or moments unfold in a lot of people's life had also made me realize that this life is not, you know, is, is not as we see it. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot, you know, to know. There's a lot 
that, that goes on behind the scene that a lot of us don't know. And of course, I've, it's, it's almost like a training ground for me. I've, I've had to learn a lot, aside from being a wedding planner. It's just being a lot of you know, eye-opening situation as well. So yes, I guess for me, it's just being around Doing a job where you get to learn so much is, 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 is an unbelievable... It's been some sort um, of training ground for you as yes. well because you've had to play wedding planner, shrink... Yes, shrink, exactly, diary, exactly. Calling the, have Best you called the police friend. on anybody? Have you called the police of on anybody? Of course, oh, wow. even bouncers, even... We've done, we've okay, done the I, most. I really look forward <laughs> to reading that, but from one single person to another single person, yeah. what would you say would be your major advice you'd give to... Because there's the... You know, there's the pressure on, pe on people to get married, get married, get married. You on the face of it. You know, what would you say is that one advice you'd give to the young girl, the young man that's looking to get married? Take your time. There's no, like I was saying earlier, there's no uh, marriage. Getting married isn't, um, there's no finish line. There's no, I got married before you. There's no such thing as that. And I don't think they're giving anybody a trophy for that. So it's, it's a big deal and you have to take your time. It's beyond the hype of the day. After 24 hours, everybody's done. Your hashtag, everybody's, you know, everybody's moved on. And then it's just you and the person who you chose to spend the rest of your life with. So really just take your time. There's no yeah. pressure. Don't get, don't get bullied by the blogs. Don't get bullied by the next brides on social media. Don't get bullied by your friends getting married and you feel like, oh my God, I'm still going to be single for the rest of my life. It's not that deep. Wedding planners are going to be here forever. And we're going to wait for you until you're ready. So I think most importantly, like Olive had mentioned, to say just one line, one line for me is plan your marriage more than you plan your wedding. Mm. Plan wow. your marriage more than you plan your wedding. I think that's such a fantastic way to wrap up this conversation. <laughs> plan your marriage more than you plan your wedding. Do not be bullied by the blogs. Do not be bullied by your friends. Your friends and do not be pressures. bullied by society as yeah. well. And you know what? I think on that note, we should also give a huge congratulations to Tania Omotayo. Now, yesterday on the show, Olive and I spoke about allegations that Tania had just gotten married, and she confirmed that on her Instagram yeah, today. Yeah, I, I think she did that intro. With the most beautiful pictures. Yeah, Aww. we saw the intro, so congratulations to Tania. Congratulations but to honestly, that. I would agree with you, Mosna. You cannot rush yourself into something that you were not prepared for. And unfortunately, that is something that we also find in our our culture and Very it's something true. we do need to get over okay so Mosu, your book is coming out soon is it out yet not yet uh, all right i think you have your book launch on sunday 20, as well, yeah on which 28, is strictly by invitation. very strictly by invitation all right so from there now are we invited yes please <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait to show we my <laughs> yes please I'm... dress code everybody please take the dress code very okay. seriously Magical some people glam. behind the scenes are already shouting that they can't wait yep. because Magical they are planning glam. to toast you Mosu, oh wow oh since okay you are single, so don't worry about the wedding planner, whoever that is. Hey! You have your wedding planner. Hey! <laughs> Just joking. He's actually, they are actually screaming backstage. Like, they're really excited. <laughs> All them giddy boys. Oh, yeah. So how can people follow you, you know, for people who want to find out more information yes. with regards to your book, mm -hmm. where to get it and mm -hmm. everything, how can they follow you? And well, also wedding planning. <laughs> yes, um, the hashtag for the book is the magic of moments. So once you follow the hashtag, you get to see all the activities on the hashtag. But my personal Instagram handle is Musun Nicole Akiwamide, double N, Musun Nicole Akiwamide. And then, of course, my business and um, event planning business page is IPC Events. All right, an S at the end. So they can follow you at IPC Events. At IPC Events at, at Musun Nicole Akiwamide at the magic. So it is the underscore magic underscore moments. <laughs> I know. Mosu, I just had the most cheesy line. Do I What's share that? it with you? What's that? What Someone said it? there's okra in front of your DM, so they are sliding. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Olive and I have a talk back, so we get to hear everything going on behind the scenes. Exactly. And when I oh heard my that, goodness. I was crying as well. Mosu, you are hot spice, so they want you. All of them want you. They're <laughs> right. they not to be in the Single girls like you, now then they rush. Now then they rush. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And all the best with your book. We look forward to seeing it. We look forward to reading it. We hope you have an amazing time. Thank you so much. It was great. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.